Okay, welcome to Easy B Software uh, training videos for my ProServe 2012 product. Now, this training video would also apply basically to my ProFrame 2015 product as well. Because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to connect your Excel spreadsheets to your database files. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is crank up the set config program and you want to click load and, and gather some information that you're going to need. The information I'm going to need basically is the name of my SQL Server, okay? The name of this computer is uh, EasyBWin10, now obviously yours is going to be different. But what you're wanting to record or write down is the name of your computer and this name right here, which happens to be SQL Express. Don't worry about the, uh, the version number. We're just interested in the computer name and the na actual name of the SQL uh, uh, instance. In this case, it's SQL Express. Another way to get this same information is if I cranked up the Microsoft SQL Server uh, Management uh, Studio. Because that right there is the information I'm looking for. That's actually the server name on this computer. On my computer, it's going to be different for yours. I'm going to right click that and select copy. Okay. I'm going to close that down. Slide this over, close this out of the way. And that was SQL Server trying to give me an update message. So I'm going to close this. So again, this is what I'm looking for is these two names. Now, I'm going to open up my spreadsheet and I'm just going to open up a blank sheet here, okay? Uh, and I'm just going to go back to file and open up a blank sheet. Now, I'm going to take uh, my mouse and I'm going to move over and I'm going to click data. Now, there's an option here that says queries and connections. You don't necessarily want to uh, select that because it opens up a, a crazy uh, section of Excel that, that we're not going to, you know, we don't want to fool with. But if I had this spreadsheet in a widescreen mode, over to the left here, I would see an option that, that read existing connections. In this case, since I minimized, that same option is right here. So it's get data using existing connection. So I'm going to select that. Now I've already previously connected to a uh, to one of my ProFrame uh, you know customer file. But I'm not going to connect to the an existing one because I want to show you how to, to establish a connection first. So the first thing I'm going to do is click the browse for more. I'm not going to try to select a connection again. This is a, an existing connection. This is going to do nothing more than open up that new source. If I click that, it's just going to open up the new source, which is bypassed, you know, what type of, uh, you know, connection I wanted to make. So what I want to do is click new source. It's defaulted to Microsoft SQL Server. Well, that's what you want. So you just click Next. Now, this is where that name came in. It's the reason I showed you how to get that information. My, my name of my computer, it was, uh, it's, well, it's actually, I'm going to right click and paste because I, I, I copied it. So that was the name of my, my computer, and I told you to get the name of the, of the server, which was SQL Server. So all you're going to do is put a backslash in there. And so that's essentially what it's looking for here. Okay? Leave all this the same. Click Next. And it's establishing the connection to our SQL Server that's running on this computer. Now I want to select the database. Well, there's a lot of databases on my system because I have a lot of different uh, systems. But on yours, you're not going to have a whole lot of uh, databases. You're, you're just going to have some similar to this right here. See, this is 
currently, this is the ProServe uh, 2012 databases. I got a ProServe customer. I got a ProServe general, ProServe inventory, and I got a ProServe orders and a system. Now, if you're one of my ProFrame 2015 users, just you're going to see ProFrame customer here rather than ProServe. You're going to see ProFrame General, ProFrame Inventory, see? So it's the same principle, you're just going to see a different file name or a different uh, database name. Now, what databases are, or would you really be interested in if you was one of, my, one of my customers running my software? Well, this customer file and this orders file, those are two of the main files that's going to have a lot of information that you may be looking for. If you're a ProFrame user, inventory is going to be important to you. But if you're a ProServe 2012 user, then inventory may not be as important to you. Well, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a connection to this customer database. Now, in that customer database, I have a lot of uh, tables inside. Well, there's not a whole lot, but I got billing. I have the ship too for ProServe customers. That's actually the service account file. And that's the AR history file. Okay. So what I want to do in this option here, I want to enable the selection of mul multiple tables. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to, I'm going to click my billing table and then I'm going to click my ship to table which actually is the service account file in ProServe. It would be the ship to file in, in ProFrame. Now I could if I wanted to pick up the history okay but I'm, I'm going to leave that out for now. I'm just going to get the billing table and the service account file table. All right. I'm going to make sure this is on because when I import uh, well actually that don't matter uh, really that's the import relationships because there's really not any okay so uh, you don't really have to turn that on or off just don't worry about it now I'm gonna select next okay now I'm just gonna it's gonna create a, a connection name for me and you can just keep that as is you don't have to change it unless you really want to but this option here is something you want to turn on because you always attempt to use this file to refresh the data. So every time you crank up this spreadsheet, it's going to refresh the data with the current information in those files. So now I'm just going to click finish. Now here, because I've selected multiple tables, it's giving me, it defaulted to a pivot table. Well, I want to change that to just a table. So what this is going to do, it's going to create a sheet for each one of those tables, okay? Now I can look at this one and tell you that it's actually, this is the ship to or the service account file because I see there's a, there's a ship to number or service account number here and there's a customer number. So I know what I would do now is just simply rename these uh, and I would just rename that to service then I would click my other one. I know this is the billing. Well, how do I know that? I, I know that because I only have a billing account number here, whereas in the other table, I actually got a ship to number. So that tells me this is the service account file. See? So I'm going to go back to the billing and I'm going to change it and rename it. The billing and then I'm just gonna forget about the first sheet because it doesn't mean anything because it actually just it added the sheets so now here's what I got I've got a connection to my customer database of ProServe and I got all my customers here all my billing accounts and I got all my service accounts now if I took this file and I saved it and just did a save as and I'm gonna put it on my PC because there's something weird about when you put it on the OneDrive, for some reason, it when you open it up the next time or a day or two later, it kind of, mine gets hung up in a, 
a file, you know, access denied because it's being used by another user. So I'm not going to put it on my OneDrive. I'm just going to put it on my PC and put it in the documents folder of, of, of my PC. So I'm going to give it a name here. I'm just going to call it, you know, data connection customer. So I'm going to save this spreadsheet, okay? And if you'll notice, it's taking a little bit. Now, obviously, my databases that I'm using here is not really that big. Yours is going to be a lot bigger, so obviously it's going to take longer for it to connect. It's going to take longer for it to load up this data and give you your information. Now, just to show you, at this point, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to close that, okay? And then I, I, you know, shut down my spreadsheet or whatever, and I come back a couple of days later, and I go in. I'm going to open a file, and actually it's right there is where I just saved it. So I'm just going to reopen it, and, uh, and then at this point it's saying external connections have been disabled. Well, you need to turn that on so that it can make the connection and now uh, it's already done it, but basically it's retrieving the latest information out of those database tables. And so there you go. And you can literally do anything you want to do with this data. You can change the columns. You can change the sort options. And anything you do as far as the columns are concerned in, in fields that you may even delete. For example, I may say, well, you know, I'm not really... Uh, well, this is my service account file. Let's go back to billing. Let's say that I'm, here's my address three and my address four. And it's like, well, I don't really, I know I don't have any customers that's got a, there's really not any customers that's, you know, that would be, well, there's one, two. <laughs> there's two customers that's actually got something in the address four field. And that, that's kind of strange but because I don't have the address three. Uh, and that's where that probably should have been. But but here's the point. If it's Z null, it means there's nothing there. It's empty. Okay? But if I wanted to, for example, I could just delete that cell altogether because I'm not interested in that. And then I save it. Okay? And it doesn't matter the next time I close and the next time I open that file. You know, it's not worrying about that field. It's just, it skips it. So it, it, you can see how you're connected now to your customer's billing file. And it's accurate data that gets pulled in every time you open the spreadsheet. So... What I've, what I've done is I've made a connection to my databases and I have that, that, uh, the, that, you know, and I could go on and on, but you, you see where this is going and you see that now you have the ability to get to any data, anything that you need out of ProServe. And if you need a connection to your uh, orders file, for example, if you want a connection to your invoice table, your, uh, your sales order table, your payment table, all of those are available in the ProServe orders database. So you would just go back through the same scenario of starting with a new uh, blank page. And well, I already had it, sorry. And then go to data and then create a new connection. But actually, I still have my existing connections, so they're available to me. Once you establish a connection, you could create another spreadsheet and connect to that, those same tables. Okay? So in this case, I don't have a connection to my, uh, my orders file or orders database. So you would just go through the scenario again and uh, connect to your orders file. And so there you have it. Uh, that's how you can connect your data to uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it helps you out. And listen, the thing about my products is the reason that I develop it in SQL Server 
of platforms is this is the very reason I do it because your data is your data. It's not mine. You're not paying me a, uh, you didn't pay a, a, a license to me, you know, for me to own your data. I don't own your data. I own the software that you use to maintain your data. But you have complete access to your data. Uh, we don't, I don't try to hide that. And so uh, that's just another check mark on EasyB software is what we do. Our products are open like this. Our data is open uh, for our customers to be able to access it freely and do with it uh, what you will or whatever you want to do with it. So thanks for watching uh, the video. And uh, hey, give us a thumbs up if you like it.